Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit and today I'm going to be doing a ranking video. It's been a while and I'm ranking the top three moments from campaign three of Chetney, specifically Chetney's moments. So we're going to be making this a series. I'm going to be going all over all of the characters from campaign three. And because I'm giving multiple entries, I'm actually going to go over every single campaign character again and making a bunch of these videos because when I went over the best moments for each campaign, I only gave one character each a moment, so now I can give them each five. But since campaign three is still actively going, I'm only giving them three, so this way this video can be made later and I can expand upon this list. So, let's get in to Chetney's best moments. My apologies, I'm just putting some stuff away. Uh, your, your time in um, Uthodurn, you didn't ever happen to come across a, a fiend, a uh, fellow. <laughs> Named <laughs> Ultgar, did you? What do you know about Ultgar? <laughs> <laughs> I would ask you the same question. My hand moves to my chisel. Her hand seems to move to like the <laughs> side of her dress. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> At number three, we have the Chetney standoff with the toy maker. Uh, Chetney wanted to go see the toy maker who made sashimi for, or who made sashimi that they bought sashimi from, and he wanted to go talk to them and see sort of what they were up to, who they were, and see if they could get anything from them, see what kind of work, woodworking skills they had. And it turned out that they both formerly knew Ultgar, and they had a small little standoff. And I love this moment. I think it's friggin' hilarious, and it is perfectly in line with how like. Travis likes to reveal backstory for characters and this was perfect and I love Matt's reaction to everything like the way he acted it all out the way they both go down to their chisels about their as if they're about to do like a high noon moment I think it's hilarious Orem's reaction Liam's reaction is perfect I, I love how he doesn't know if he's gonna try to get involved or if he's gonna stay out of it because it's not his business and I love that it's a small little trickle of us learning more about Chetney's backstory that's my favorite part learning about his backstory in these small little ways and this is the one of the earliest examples of this um, backstory outside of him being a werewolf. So this, to me, was a lot of fun to see and a lot of fun to learn. And I love everyone's reaction to it. It's really enjoyable. Truly a highlight after the, the end of the Twilight Museum, uh, what is it, break-in. And I really enjoy this moment because it was a lot of fun. We got to see another good hearty laugh from Chetney. Everyone's reaction to it and learning his backstory is always really important. And the way that they all frantically scramble to try to write things down to make sure that they know what this is for later. I love this moment. I think it's hilarious. Everyone's reactions are perfect. It's awesome. Chetney tumble over and begin to bulge. The shoulders begin to ripple and expand the fur, <laughs> expanding as the transformation sets in. You watch as the face pulls back and the snout of the wolf begins to push out and it grows larger and larger, bigger than you've seen Chetney emerge as its arms reach out. The length of almost eight feet on each end. The claws extend. The white fur begins to burn outward like a massive mat of cloak like fur, a carpet of continuous snow white spines out of the body. The teeth extend, slobbering, growling. The, the, the spittle itself almost carrying a ruddy liquid coloration to it as it spatters onto the ground, lost almost amongst the fall of the water itself. As Chetney begins to spin, you see that same kind of blue, misty glow in his eyes amongst the other Gorgine. The water is still scattering across the shoulders. At number two is Greater Chetney versus the party. I really like this one because, first of all, the objective is not kill the other person. It's not hurt them so they go unconscious. It's not do whatever. It's get Chetney back under control. Yes, that is always an option to knock him out. But this one was clearly they're trying to get to him. They're trying to appeal to him and have a conversation with him. And I enjoy that we get to learn more about lycanthropy in this sort of setting. It was a lot of fun to learn more about the curse itself, how the Gorgine work, the sort of punishments the Gorgine have, and everything sort of surrounding Greater Chetney was cool. And when, when he grew to a lot larger than he normally does and he got really massive and buff was also really cool. Travis's reaction to being handed the sheet and reading it was funny. Everyone else sort of trying to figure out if they need to fight him and knock him out or if they need to communicate with him is really fun for me. So I really like this combat. I think it was a lot of fun. And like I said, learning more about Chetney and how his personality of learning that he really loves being a werewolf. So he wanted to embrace the shit of this was really fun for me. And I like learning about the Gorgine and lycanthropy in Matt's world. I think it was a lot of fun. And as I walk, I look up 
at him and I say, boy, I bet you think you're, you're real scary. You think good as a gift. <laughs> oh, there it is! Wait till you get a load of me. My shoulder <laughs> pops out. Yeah. My back cracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Number one is obviously Jenny becoming a werewolf for the first time. I love this moment because there was a lot of speculation surrounding Chetney when he first showed up because the, the character sheet claimed Rogue and his strength was 17 goddamn. That is way too high for a Rogue and I believe his like dexterity was only like 13. So it wasn't like making too much sense stat wise for him to be a Rogue. And there was a bunch of other stuff. In combat he would never use sneak attack. There was like two or three combats before the reveal of him being a werewolf and he never used sneak attack once. The staple of the rogue class and he had advantage a couple of times and still never used it so the fact that they were able to successfully well not successfully lots of people figured out that very early on that he was a werewolf or some sort of lichen but to the extent that when they finally revealed it all the other like players had a good time seeing the reveal i loved the reveal because it was like which kind of lichen is he i have a video that says he's a were tiger because 17 was the stat that is get like it's raised up because of a were tiger so I thought that to me was like the perfect fit. Like that's his strength, 17, because he's a were tiger. But then it was revealed he was a werewolf, so it was really cool seeing that. And I really enjoyed it because he was face to face with a person who ultimately kidnapped his teacher, and it was a lot of fun for us to see this moment of him Travis coming full circle. Travis, for the last two campaigns before this, made it very clear he likes werewolves, but was trying to figure out what to do with being a player for it. And he didn't get the chance to with Grog. He didn't get the chance to with Ford. And he didn't get the chance to with Bertrand Bell for the short lived that that was. And then he got the chance here, which this was a lot of fun. I love seeing the twisted ways that Travis pops himself into being a werewolf. You can clearly tell that he is a massive werewolf fan. And it's fun to see him finally becoming a character that shows a bit more of who he is in himself. Like, Grog is obviously a pretty generic dumb goliath barbarian character ford is a character who travis had to like step out of his comfort zone a lot to play with the whole romance thing and everything like that and a lot of his characters are forward thinking people so he doesn't focus on backstory too much which is the same for chetney but now he gets to also have this childhood love that he's always had for forever and we've seen this childhood love every time they interact with a werewolf but now he gets to enjoy that himself which is one of the best parts about chetney is that he gets to finally be the character that he's been wanting to be for a long time. So, it's really cool. So there you have it. My favorite Chetney moments from Campaign 3 so far. I already know what number 4 is going to be when I eventually do my top 5 favorite moments when the campaign ends. Which will be very hard to narrow down 5, I can tell already. But I know what number 4 is. It might go up or down depending on how things unfold in this campaign. And uh, next week, on Monday, sorry not Monday, on Tuesday, it'll be the fcg video i think fcg is another fun one that we can kick this uh, ranking videos off with so i'm very excited for that so i will see you guys on tuesday for the fcg video and tonight i get to go see D, &D uh honor among thieves so i'm excited to see that movie i'll tell everyone what i think of it i'm not gonna spoil anything i'm just gonna say if it's good or bad that'll be on the next video so yeah until then peace